What's up Piper Drivers? Today I am fortunate enough to be standing between not one but two Mandalorian one quarter scale statues. Now ever since I unboxed this one actually I have been being asked the question which way am I going to go? Am I going to stick with the sideshow? Am I going to go with the Iron Studios? And that's what we're going to find out today. I'm going to be comparing the Iron Studios Mandalorian quarter scale legacy statue to the sideshow Mandalorian premium format figure. Which is the quarter scale statue I'm going to keep? Let's find out. Now, if this is your first time on the channel, here on the Hyperdrive, we talk all things Star Wars on here, especially Star Wars collecting. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can jump to light speed every week with us right here on the Hyperdrive. And if you're looking for the unboxing experience for either one of these statues, I unbox both these statues on my big brother channel, the MCE channel. I'll leave a link in the description below for both of these unboxing videos so you can see the experience as that unfolded. Uh, but today, we're going to talk about the differences between these two statues. So, they are both quarter scale, and I'm going to give it a quick turnaround right here so you guys can see the, uh, all of the look of it. I got to be a little careful here because these Ambin rifles are, are very long, so I always worry about them. There are definite points where you want to be careful, you know, just so that nothing breaks. So... Let's start off talking about the difference in price and shipping on these two statues. So let's start off with Iron Studios. The Iron Studios quarter scale statue originally ran for around $750 USD. Now this statue here was not available in the United States. It was blocked from being sold in the United States. So it made it extremely difficult to get this piece. Uh, not only did you end up having to pay uh, the 750 but if you were living in the United States, you probably were going to pay right around $300 to $400 shipping uh, because of the size of the box. It's a very big and heavy box for the Iron Studios. The Iron Studios also has an addition size of 750 statues total made in the, in the world, so it makes it a very limited piece. Sideshow statue, on the other hand, also comes in a tall box. This one here originally retailed for $635. They made 7,500 of these pieces. So there is a lot of these pieces out there. You can still get it over at Sideshow and pretty much anywhere else where you can buy collectibles like uh, Comic Concepts, Collector Zone, or and, you know, Big Bad Toy Store. This is a highly available piece right here. The box was also pretty big, but it was kind of skinny. And if you're living in the United States, you can get it. So the shipping on it was much less putting it somewhere in the range of $700 once you had it shipped, where this one is sitting at almost $1,100 shipped into the United States if you got it at retail. Now, this has been sold out, so now in order to get this, you're probably only going to get the option to buy it over on eBay. Uh, I've heard recently that uh, a friend of mine got it for $1,200 roughly, so that's about what you're looking to pay for it. Now, for me anyway, addition size does matter. I like to collect things that are limited, uh, so... This statue right here has a lot less made, makes it a much more limited, much more rare piece. Uh, and for that reason alone, I like to collect things like that. It makes it more of a value to me when I spend over $500. I believe anything over $500 should have at a max an addition size of like 2000 maybe 1500 I don't like the high addition sizes. It makes me feel like this is a mass-produced uh, piece and it's going to be around for a while. So it's very likely that this one here will not hold as much value as this one in the long run. So for me anyway, the winner as far as price to value goes is Iron Studios. All right, so all things being fair, you bought the statue and now you're at the unboxing experience. The box has arrived. Which one here had the better unboxing experience for me? So both statues come in huge boxes, very tall boxes. Sideshows is a little bit on the thin side. This one here is kind of big all the way around. They both had the white foam, you know, that leaves all kinds of a mess in there and everything wrapped in plastic. But I feel that Sideshow did a better job with packaging their, their statue. It came wrapped in a soft type of uh, tissue, uh, which was a little different than the other tissue that I've seen, you know, like from XM Studios. Uh, made me feel like you wouldn't get any scratches at all from that tissue. And then it was wrapped in plastic on top of that. And it seems like at least the foam places for all of the different pieces fit a lot better. So when I popped open the box, nothing was loose. Everything was nice and in its place, which I liked a lot. Whereas the Iron Studios one, when I got it, the foam was put in upside down. Uh, Grogu's head was loose in the box and bouncing around everywhere. 
Um, and, and it just made for a very scary experience right at the beginning, you know, and, and to me, the unboxing experience sets the tone, you know, it's like when you get something new, you know, you like, you like, you open it up and you get that resin smell that you get from getting a statue. And, um, and then, you know, it's, it's all about, is everything, uh, you know, fine is nothing broken. Uh, you know, you want that kind of experience when you open something up and you see that everything is in its place. That to me automatically makes me feel happy. And then I move on to the assembly and, you know, I got an overall happy experience. So that's, that's what I like to see. So as far as the unboxing experience goes, at least for me anyway, the Sideshow one was the better option. All right, so now we're gonna talk about engineering. So the, both statues have a very similar look to them. You got a, you know, basically Mando walking with Grogu at the side and floating in the pram. So there's not, there's not really much of a difference in the overall uh, um, artistic presence of these, both, both of these pieces. But the engineering's a little bit different. Sideshow went with the idea of attaching the pram to the cape which gives it this really awesome illusion that it's floating in space. You can get your hands all the way around it, which is very cool. I like that they came up with that option. Now, the way it keys in is at the very tip of the cape right here. Mine does not key in all the way. It kind of just uses its own weight to rock forward, although the pram is, is very light. I do have that uh, thought that, you know, this could be an issue going down the road. You know, it could be a, a leaning issue or maybe this would fall over. Um, the cape is very thick especially right here at the tip. So I think that it's very likely that it's going to be okay. I don't think there's really any issues that, that can happen with it. But, you know, there's always that thought. Still looks really, really awesome. Iron Studios did a similar idea, but they decided they have a key in at the base, which gives it the same idea that it's floating in space. Uh, but it doesn't really do it as well as, as Sideshow does. Sideshow has this really cool idea going on there. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Now, the figures are... Uh, design or actually built a little differently so this one here is a hollow figure so when you lift it up at least on mine you can hear the rattling of dried resin inside of the body and it's hollow yeah it's this is a hollow so let you guys know up front this is a this is a hollow statue i could hear the the little bits of resin rolling around inside there uh, if that bothers you that's something to consider uh, it does make the statue lighter than this statue when you when you lift it so you have that overall feel of quality when you're holding on to the iron studios body now once you put it on your shelf i really feel like that doesn't really make much of a difference but i know that some people have issues with that so i feel like that's something to mention another uh, design piece that they have here is the way the ambin rifle attaches to the back on sideshow they went with a plastic strap which attaches here via magnet to this sculpted area of the strap and gives it that feeling that it's actually the way that he would have it on him, where it's, you know, has like a strap that he slings over his arm. So I think that's done very nicely. In Iron Studios case, they have it attached to a key on the back of the cape. It doesn't really connect to this uh, strap at all. So, you know, in that sense, I feel like that is kind of a design flaw there. I, I didn't, I don't like the way that looks now looking at, at the sideshow. I feel like Sideshow did that better. Both of these two, though, have the exact same flaw when it comes to the rifle, and that's that the, they attach with a very, very small magnet. And because of that, when you take and pop in your rifle, at least on both of these for me, the magnet pops right back out and gets stuck to the rifle side. Now, on Sideshow's case, the magnets are exposed, so it makes it very easy to take the magnet off and uh, put it back into place. And I think the fix is to just, you know, put some epoxy or super glue to put it back into place and then you can put the gun down and you don't have any issues. In Iron Studios case, the rifle has a recessed area where the magnet is put into. So what ends up happening is your magnet then gets stuck on the recess side and it's very, very, very difficult to come to take back out. I mean, you have to use some very small tools to get it to pop back out. So it's on both of them, it's, it's a struggle to fix the issue, but it's worse on the Iron Studios in that case. Now, I haven't fixed mine, and you can see that the gun is still attached there, and that's because the key is long enough to hold it. But, you know, I would feel a lot better if the magnet was actually holding it in place. So I eventually got to take care of that. So that's something to consider on both these pieces. So all that being said, I'm going to give this one to Sideshow, and that's because the pram just looks really, really cool floating in space like that. I mean, it's definitely an engineering marvel the way they got that to work, and they executed it really well. So good job. All right, so next thing I'm going to talk about is the overall design, the paint, the sculpt, you know, all the things that make the statue what it is and what, it's, what makes it so awesome to have it on the shelf. So that's what we're going to talk about right now. 
Um, both statues, like I said before, they have the same overall execution of the, uh, of the story, right? It's, it's uh, Amando walking and you got Grogu at the side. So they both have that same feel to it. Now, Iron Studios has this really awesome looking base, which sets a tone and a scene in, in, uh, in this whole overall story. He's walking on this planet. You got a Stormtrooper helmet right there with all kinds of grime and dirt and texturing, which looks freaking awesome. I love the way they came out. I like that it's got this lower section of the base, which has the, um, the, uh, the, the Mudhorn skull. I don't know why I was thinking that for a second, but yeah, it has the Mudhorn skull right there, which looks really, really good. And it gives it this nice, uh, elegant look to the lower part of the base and kind of like a best car feel to that. I really like the way the base was executed on this. Has lots of different colors, lots of great texturing throughout this base. And when you see it in person, you actually can see that this looks cool. Sideshow's base here looks a little plain at first when you see it. It has just a simple flat terrain. There's nothing really coming out of it, which can, uh, which makes me feel that this looks cool, you know. And if somebody who was not into Star Wars would just see a a uh, a flat base. And even guys like me who are into Star Wars would just see a flat base. But one of the commenters, Jason Hansen, pointed out that there's actually a Mythosar skull stamped into this base, which I think is really neat. That's a nice little uh, Easter egg that they threw in here. Uh, and it's cool. I like the way that looks. But when you first glance at it, very difficult to see that. So Iron Studios definitely wins it out when it comes to the base. As far as the two figures go, there is a noticeable difference in size here. So Mando is about a six foot tall character. He, uh, you know, Pedro Pascal is about 5'11", actually, but the suit was actually designed for some guys who were wearing, who were about six foot five. So, you know, he's, he's kind of in that range, I guess, when you're, when you're talking about him on the show. So the figure six foot, between six foot and six foot five. The Iron Studios piece is bigger. He looks taller. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely a little oversized if the idea is to be six foot, whereas the one on Sideshow is pretty much on the money when it comes to the size of the figure. 18 inches tall, this guy's a little over, like about 18 and a half inches tall, so it makes him a little bigger. The armor, the gun, the, the way the body looks is bigger, you know, so he just looks like a tougher guy, whereas this one here is a little on the slender side. The sculpts on Grogu, you can noticeably see that this one here looks a lot bigger, which I think is wrong. This looks very, very big. This one here looks probably a little more accurate as far as the size goes. Texturing on both of these look pretty good. The paint job on them is a little bit different. This one here is a little lighter, which looks a little bit more like the Grogu from uh, the life-size Grogu that I saw from Sideshow that I used to own. That has more, act, more uh, closeness to color there. This one here is a little bit on the dark side. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's a little bit different here, which is kind of weird. It's because it's Sideshow's piece. You think they would have painted it similarly to the way they did their, their life-size piece. Uh, the prams are different. This one here is more of an accurate look to what the pram looked like at this point of the story. He had already lost the pram, this particular one, within the first episode, or actually the second episode of The Mandalorian. And then this was uh, then built towards the end when he already had the best car armor. So that's the thing. This one here is painted really nicely. I love the way that you have all of the kinds of oxidation. You have weathering. You have, uh, you have all that going on with this look to this uh, thing. So it doesn't look plain. But I love the color of this one. This one here has got that light look to it. You know, it definitely stands out when, it, when you're standing next to the, to the Mandalorian, which this one kind of blends in because of the colors of the metal. Uh, you have oranges and you have some tans in here and everything. So that makes this pop more. So I like that as well. When it comes to the suits, the armor on the Sideshow one is 100% a lot more accurate than the one from Iron Studios. Iron Studios, I feel, took some liberty with the way it looked, or maybe they were just given some concept art and they kind of went with that along with what they saw on the TV show. I think Sideshow probably had access to more of the actual files. So their statue looks a lot more accurate to the best car look. Also the paint on the metal on this one is so much nicer than the one on Iron Studios. They both have a weathered you know, look to the metal, but this one here is smooth. It looks like metal. Whereas this one here has more of like an orange peel effect going on with the metal. So to me, that's a little bit of a thing. The undersuit on the Iron Studios is super cool. It's got all kinds of texturing, stitching. Uh, you know, it almost seems like hyper real with the amount of texture that they put into the undersuit 
on the Iron Studios. Whereas this one here is super smooth. You don't really see a lot of texture going on there. Uh, so that kind of, kind of like, you know, it loses a little bit of appeal when you see that that way. Also, the other thing that looks a little strange here is the way the pants are kind of pulling. Kind of weird the way the fold is here at the groin, whereas it's not that way here on the Iron Studios. This looks more like the way pants would look. Uh, you also got a lot of texturing in the boots, uh, which are neat. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. The pose on them is very different. And I've said that before, you know, the Iron Studios has kind of like a tough guy, you, you know, walk to him kind of like the way he looked in the TV show. This one here has a little bit more of exaggeration, a little more swag, you know, maybe a little flamboyance there in his, in his pose. He's kind of twisted, which looks a little, a little bit awkward. I know some people have been saying that, you know, he looks like he's reaching for his gun. Honestly, the, the only thing I think is reaching there is justification for the way that looks. Um, he, for him to be reaching for his gun, his, his hand is way back. It's, it's, it's far further back than the way the gun is, where the gun is. So I think that if they had moved the hand a little bit more forward, it would look like that. But it, I don't think that's the case. I think they meant it to have like a swag walk to him. And it doesn't look bad. I actually like the way that looks. It gives it a lot of appearance uh, and, and gives it some appeal to it. Um, so I, I dig the way that came out. It's really, really nice the way that came out. Uh, the helmet on both of these guys, this one here to me looks a little more accurate as far as the actual look of the Mandalorian helmet. The, the, the color tone of the best car on the Iron Studios I think is, is more accurate. This one here is a little brighter. This one here is a little bit more like that Aluma Luster type of look to it. So I think that one, that one here over here, I think they did a great job with the way that came out. So that's some of the differences there. Um, trying to think if there's anything else here. I like the armaments on both of them. The only thing that I think on both of these statues that is a, that is a flaw is that they should have had a swap out hand, which could have been very easy to have this little hand key in here where he's holding the pistol. Neither one of them decided to go with that. You know, I don't like that they didn't do that. Uh, I do like that Sideshow has one hand closed fisted and the other hand open. I think that gives it more of, a, of an appeal to the walk. Uh, this one here has both hands open. So, you know, it's, it's just a, a design choice. I really can't tell you, um, you know, at least in my opinion, uh, I like the walk of this guy better. You know, I like the paint of this one better. Uh, I like the base on this one better, like the, the idea of the base here, but I really like the base of this one. Uh, so there's, there's good and bad with both of them. As far as which one I'm going to keep, the one I'm going to keep is the Iron Studios. And the reasoning why I'm keeping the Iron Studios is because it's one, it's, it's much more rare and I like to collect rare stuff. And, you know, so I, I dig that. Uh, there is a flaw in this design here. One, they didn't have the, they probably didn't have access to the actual uh, look of the, of the Mandalorian suit. They were probably going on based on, on concept art and on uh, what they saw from the TV show and kind of inferring some things. So there is some uh, flaws with this, like the pram is not correct and everything, which also makes it kind of unique in that sense. Whereas this one is, is much more mainstream and accurate, right? Um, so I like that this one has that kind of unique appeal to it, which I dig. Yes, it has its flaws, you know, both of them do. But I prefer the Irish Studios, in my opinion, uh, over the sideshow. So that's, that's my opinion. That's the way I would go with it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this, which is the one that you like better based on these differences. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, may the force be with you.